The year is 1946. Little Maya sets out to pick wildflowers for her mother when a light appears above her, and she vanishes. This same phenomenon happens to soldier Richard in 1951, old millionaire Orson in 1979, and boys Kyle and Sean in 2001 along with over 4,000 other people. In the present day, Tom sits by Kyle's hospital bed, listening to a news report about an asteroid nearing Earth. Tom's wife, Linda, enters the room expressing her desire to move on after three difficult years of Kyle being in a coma. In Seattle, the Department of Homeland Security urgently calls Diana to work. She learns the asteroid has changed course, accelerated, and is heading straight for Earth. Various countries launch missiles in an attempt to destroy it. While people brace for disaster, calling their loved ones to say goodbye. The asteroid slows as it enters the atmosphere and Diana calculates its landing point near the department. Hundreds of people, including rescue services, journalists, police, and FBI agents, gather at the scene. Before their eyes, a sphere descends from the sky and then vanishes, leaving behind a dense fog from which 4,400 people emerge looking exactly as they did on the day they disappeared. Tom leaves his son to seek permission from Rayland to return to service. Raylan hesitates, aware of Tom's personal interest due to his nephew being among the returned. Eventually, Raylan agrees and pairs Tom with Diana to examine the 4,400. Sean is called for an interview and is happy to see his uncle, but Tom has been convinced for three years that Sean harmed Kyle, causing his coma and then flood. In the waiting room, Richard meets Lily, the granddaughter of the girl he loved in 1951. A month and a half later, a district court orders the release of the detainees. Diana disagrees and demands isolation, but the 4,400 are released. Among them, 130 have nowhere to go, including little Maya, who has no living relatives. Richard and Lily say goodbye as she prepares to reunite with the family she hasn't seen in 11 years, but her husband has remarried and asks her to leave. Orson finds his wife in a nursing home, lamenting the lost time. Richard goes to his old address in Street Lewis only to find a homeless shelter there. Tom takes Diana to a party in Sean's honor to show her that the returned are just like everyone else. Outside, Tom apologizes to Sean and expresses his happiness at his return. During their conversation, a bird crashes into a window, and when Sean picks it up, it comes back to life and flies away. Maya is taken in by a foster family and tells Diana they will meet again soon, surprising her. Orson tries to return to his old company, but his partner refuses to rehire him. Maya's foster parents are puzzled when she puts her shoes on a chair, saying her sneakers might get wet on the floor. The first night of freedom is challenging for everyone. Richard spends time at a cafe, Sean finds threatening messages on his car, Lily wanders the streets, and a pipe bursts in Maya's foster home, flooding the house. Orson goes to his former partner's house, shaking the gate until the whole house trembles and windows shatter. Moments later, Orson starts screaming, and his partner's head explodes, killing him. Sean returns to school but struggles to fit in and Orson feels like an outcast. Although not charged, he is not released either. When Diana reads Orson's testimony, he becomes angry, causing everything around him to shake. Maya visits her parents' graves with her guardians, appreciating the beautiful cemetery. She promises her foster parents that their cemetery will be just as nice. Lily faces a new shock when she goes to the doctor with nausea and discovers she is pregnant. After finishing his business, Orson hurries to the nursing home only to find his wife's bed empty, she has passed away, prompting him to wreak havoc. Lily tells her husband about the pregnancy, but he denies any involvement and refuses to let her see their daughter, threatening legal action if she tries. One boy continues to harass Sean until Sean pins him to the ground, draining his life with his hand. Although the boy is saved, this frightens the crowd even more. Maya's foster parents, scared by her predictions, return her to the quarantine station. Her would-be mother advises her to be more cautious with her predictions. Richard finds Lily in the park, and they go to a cafe where she tells him about her pregnancy. Richard shares the story of his romance with her grandmother. Tom and Diana arrive at Orson's hiding place, but he starts destroying everything again. To calm him down, Tom fires a shot. Orson is taken to the hospital, and Ryland orders an investigation into the abilities of the return to prevent new tragedies. Sean, remembering the revived bird and his classmate who almost stopped breathing, tests his powers on his cousin, briefly bringing him out of the coma. Carl, another returned individual, goes back to work at his fish shop. Walking with his wife, Grace, he reminisces about his past life. Despite warnings about the park's dangers, Carl decides to walk through it at night and is attacked by hooligans. He uses his new abilities to defend himself. Tom and Diana visit Maya after her return due to numerous complaints about her predictions. Raylan asks his colleagues to handle the situation. Richard rents an apartment for Lily and her child, and Lily asks him to stay with them. Suddenly, Lily feels unwell and rushes outside. 
Carl tells his wife about his attack and announces his plan to revive the park and make it safe again. The doctor informs Tom and Linda about a brief surge of brain activity in their son, suggesting new chances for recovery. Tom learns that Sean visited Kyle the night the monitors showed a spike, but Sean denies waking his cousin. The agents explore hypotheses about the return, but the only one they have is aliens. At Lily's request, Richard rents another apartment and Lily is so happy she kisses him. Carl can't wait for morning and heads to the park at night to start cleaning up. He manages to paint a bench and save a girl from hooligans. Diana visits Maya in the lab and Maya asks to go home, but Diana needs time to think. The girl rescued in the park describes her savior as a superhero who smelled like fish. Lily still hopes to reunite with her daughter and watches her through the window in the evenings. When she feels unwell, her presence is revealed, leading to her arrest. Richard asks Lily's ex-husband to withdraw the statement, promising she won't bother him again. That evening, Richard arranges a romantic dinner for Lily, and they develop a romance. Nikki visits Sean in the garage and accidentally burns her hand, but Sean heals it with a touch, and their meeting ends with a kiss. Despite Dennis asking his brother not to get involved, Carl continues his night raids in the park. Tom and Diana track him down and find him seriously injured. Tom calls for an ambulance, but it's too late. In memory of the returned man, locals gather to clean up the park and complete his work. Diana visits the lab at night and takes Maya with her. Tom headed to the hospital where Kyle has been transferred to the IQ due to serious brain problems. It's discovered that a serial killer, Oliver Knox, was among the returned, and new victims have appeared in the city. The agents visit Knox, but he denies any involvement. Sean, preoccupied with his abilities, visits the mountain where the glowing sphere appeared. He finds several dozen returned individuals there, including millionaire Jordan Clare, who was also among the missing. Clare tells the crowd that the world is against them and offers his support, inviting everyone to his mansion to discuss their future. Diana inspects the site of a recent murder and finds a fresh fingerprint, quickly identifying the serial killer, but he remains elusive. The sheriff feels he should apologize to Knox for the false accusation. The nanny Diana hired for Maya quits, scared by the girl's predictions. In the city center, a strange man attempts to step in front of a truck and then claims he is guilty of the mass crimes. Tom finds this suspicious, believing Knox is responsible for the crimes and seeking to understand how he does it. The return gather at Jordan's mansion, and he takes a special interest in Lily and Richard upon learning of Lily's pregnancy. He offers Richard a job, knowing his difficulties in finding employment. Another letter, allegedly from the serial killer, arrives at the police, and Tom suspects Knox but lacks evidence. Sean revisits the abduction site and recalls that something wanted to take Kyle. In the park, another maniac targets the returned, but the agents intercept him. They head to Knox's home, finding an altar to the victims and a note with the name of the girl they saved. Meanwhile, Knox is in Felicia's apartment, but the cops arrive before he can act. Knox is placed in a glass cell, where soundproof glass prevents him from doing harm. Tom sees Sean reviving Kyle at his bedside. Kyle recognizes his father is discharged home but finds everything unfamiliar, worrying his parents. Tom thanks Sean and asks him to keep his abilities a secret. Lily and Richard return home to find their apartment door rigged with explosives, but Lily's sudden illness prevents a disaster. Tom and Diana investigate the crime scene, and Diana tries to get information from Tom about Sean's connection to Kyle's awakening. But he keeps his nephew's secret. The millionaire gives Richard and Lily a house in a gated community built for all 4,400 returned people. Kyle tears up photographs, feeling estranged from everyone. The ages warn Jordan that gathering everyone in one place is too dangerous, despite the community filling up. Nevertheless, the millionaire is determined to proceed, and Richard, now the head of security, plans to assist him. Diana arrives at school to pick up Maya, and the principal asks her not to bring Maya back due to fears of becoming targets if a hunt begins for her. Noticing Diana's concern, Maya reassures her, promising that someone will fix everything soon. Another returned individual, Forrest Mary, dies, increasing the agent's alarm over the rising number of victims among the 4,400. The situation grows more serious. Nikki breaks up with Danny, and Sean seizes the opportunity to invite her on a date. A man from Washington arrives at the department, hints at removing the agents from the case due to their connections with the 4,400. Linda asks Tom to check on Kyle, and Tom finds his son marking a map, claiming he is looking for himself. Sean takes Nikki to the lakeside, where the sphere had dropped him off with the other returned, and they enjoy their time together. The agents discover a lab where substances to eliminate the returned were made, but the perpetrators escape. They learn that the criminals are brothers of one of Knox's victims and are heading to Sean's house. However, this turns out to be a false lead and the criminals reach the millionaire's community instead. The security service and Tom manage to stop a van filled with explosives just in time to prevent a disaster. 
Kyle's mental state deteriorates and he eventually declares that he is an outsider and not who they think he is. The family takes him back to the hospital, hoping he will get help, but he remains fixated on flipping through TV channels without explanation. While Tom steps out of the hospital, agents from Washington arrive and take Kyle away despite Linda's pleas. When Tom learns of this, he confronts his colleague, demanding to know where Kyle is being held, but the planet agent doesn't reveal the location. Lily discovers during a checkup that her baby has a genetic anomaly, prompting the doctor to order further tests. Richard overhears a conversation between Jordan's secretary and the doctor, discovering that Jordan regularly checks in on Lily's doctor. By deception, Richard obtains Jordan's call logs and confirms his suspicions. He visits the doctor to find out why she reports everything about Lily to Jordan after each visit. It turns out that Richard is likely the father of Lily's child. Diana discovers Kyle's location, and she and Tom plan to rescue him and hide him in a rented house with Linda. In the evening, they prepare for the mission. Maya, wishing Diana an easy task, assures her that they will find Kyle and all the answers. They break into the lab, free Kyle, who gives them an urgent address. Tom tries to take his son to the hideout, but Kyle insists on going to the beach where Sean was once abducted, and Tom complies. The millionaire summons Lily and shows her old newspaper clippings accusing Richard of attacking young women. After talking to Richard, Lily understands Jordan's motive and asks for Richard to leave the community as soon as possible. Danny learns about Sean's affair with Nikki and confronts him in front of their mother. Sean, not wanting to harm his brother, touches him, causing Danny to nearly pass out and prompting their mother to view Sean as a monster. Jordan tries to stop the fugitives and grabs Lily, but as soon as he touches her belly, he feels unwell. He watches the car drive away, unable to intervene further. He still insists he will take the child into the millionaire's fortune. Sean arrives at the community, discusses his abilities and problems, and asks for a chance to stay. Tom takes his son to the beach, where federal agents soon arrive as well. Before his father's eyes, Kyle emits a bright beam of light that shoots straight into the sky. Though outwardly paralyzed by the light, Tom and the agents feel wonderful inside. Standing by the water, Tom hears a foreign voice emanating from Kyle's body. Initially convinced this is the work of aliens, Tom is startled when the voice reveals the truth. They are ordinary people from the future. Humanity is dying in that future, and the return have been sent back with abilities to change and save the world. Before the voice can finish, an agent shoots Kyle, breaking the beam and causing the men to fall to the ground. Kyle takes his last breaths, and Tom begins to say goodbye. Suddenly, light leaves Kyle's body, and a minute later, he awakens as his real self. Six months later, Lily and Richard live in a small house at the foot of the mountains. On an ordinary day as they drive to the hospital for the birth of their baby, they don't notice the trees bowing along the road. This concludes the first season. Friends, would you be interested in a summary of the second season? Please write in the comments.